Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about Hurricane Larry, which is expected to be a major hurricane very shortly and could pose a threat to a lot of North America, or it could go out the sea. So we're going to talk about all those probabilities within this video. Now, before I get into things, I would ask that you smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I would also like to remind you that we uploaded our most recent winter forecast just about a week ago. And if you haven't checked that out already, it's going to be on the top right corner of your screen today, and you can check it out. It has our precipitation forecast, temperature forecast, snowfall forecast, and the overall forecast, which reveals what's underneath these question marks. For today's comment of the day, I want to know what category do you think that Hurricane Larry will get up to eventually? Let me know in the comments down below what you think, and I will be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into things, and first things first, we're taking a look here at the satellite imagery. And take a look at this one. Uh, you can see there's two major areas of those very tall clouds indicated by the whites and the pinks there. Or actually three if you really take a look at it, or even four actually, there's one pretty far away. Uh, but there's two main areas there, you can see there's a big cluster of them going on on the very left side and then there's a smaller one on the right side and, and in between there's actually a little bit of an empty area and that is a eye that is trying to develop typically this is what we see at the very very beginning stages of a hurricane that's developing an eye and we actually saw this with Ida and we're accurately able to predict uh, that that eye was developing in a very similar fashion so I think this is an eye that is trying to develop unless this one struggles which in in the next 12 or 24 hours which I don't think it's going to uh, we should see an eye developing out of this empty area there here's the entire five-day graphical tropical weather outlook as you can see we have the remnants of Ida there we also have a yellow region down there for the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico which we're going to talk about in a moment and then we have Hurricane Larry just sitting there in the middle of the Atlantic with a long time to develop here is that disturbance in the Southern Caribbean and the Southern Gulf there. We only have about a 20% chance of development over the next five days, leaving this one at mostly uh, a, a non-factor unless the chances go up, which with how far south it is and how much land interaction there's going to be, I don't really see this one having a massive chance of developing unless this one gets a huge shift in what its, tra its trajectory is as far as its track is concerned. Here is Hurricane Larry. Here's our basically our cone forecast here from the National, National Hurricane Center here. As you can see, there is a, no land interaction expected at least until the middle portion of next week because we get all the way to Tuesday and there's no land in sight. Uh, but we can see that this one is expected to be a major hurricane by this weekend according to the National Hurricane Center here. So it's going to pretty much be developing through late this week and then Saturday uh, maybe very early on Saturday morning around 2 a.m. or so is when they're projecting this one to be a Category 3 major hurricane. This one does have a very decent shot uh, at becoming a Category 4 or potentially even Category 5. The good news is that for a while we don't have any land in sight. The next place this one has a good chance of hitting is Bermuda. So we're going to need to obviously watch those, uh, those impacts that could potentially arise from that. And then also... Uh, there is a United States and Canada threat, mostly Canada. Canada has the highest chance of being hit by this one, actually, because it is going to do kind of a curve, and the further north you are, the bigger chance you have of being impacted by this one. You might have noticed on the thumbnail, I have the pink area saying watch out uh, pretty far south, so that that's the lowest probability down there in Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. It would need to pretty much just keep going directly west, which doesn't seem to be by any means the most likely track at this point but you guys know by now my stance on everything is to include every single possible outcome and that is a very slim but possible outcome at this point now as you head to the mid-atlantic chances get a little bit higher but not still not super high a new england or northeast impact seems to be the highest for the for the united states at least uh, and i would say there's about a 10 percent chance of that happening at this point and then for canada up there and I'm talking about the very, very far areas like Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, areas like that. I would say there's about a 30 to 40% chance of it impacting you guys. And I would say there's about a 50% shot of this one just staying out to sea. So there is many, many options on this tape on, on the table right now. And you can probably tell that my confidence isn't super high at this point because of all these different options, just from the way I'm talking. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to move on and start talking about impacts, timing, sea surface temperatures, all sorts of things that are going to play a part in this storm. Here is our hurricane force wind speed probabilities. And as you can see, obviously these are very high. Uh, we have about a 
30 to 70% chance within all of these orange and gold shades in there, and even yellow, uh, and that's going to just keep going up. Obviously, it gets to yellow and eventually green because it's further and further out, and that track could be a little bit different. We're going to take a look at the spaghetti models a little later in the video, and you will be able to tell that this one really could go anywhere. There's a very decent shot that it could hit uh, North America at this point. And trust me, in the comments down below, you're going to see a lot of people saying, like, what in the world? Why are you calling for that to happen? But you guys know I'm just including every possible option because I don't want anybody to get caught off guard no matter what. People, when we were forecasting Ida, when it was way uh, further away from the United States than it obviously ended up being, uh, I included the Gulf as a potential threat, and I actually felt like it would pose a very major threat to the Gulf Coast, and people were consistently uh, saying that I was wrong and crazy for calling that to be an option. We see this time and time again with every single system, but when you call, like what I do, um, for ev every single possibility, when I include every possibility in the thumbnail and in my forecast, you can't be wrong. If you include every option, you can't be wrong. That's my mentality. I don't want anybody to get caught off guard, uh, so I'm just very open a lot of forecasters are not. I'm open with all the possibilities. I'm open with lower probability things. Like for instance, I just told you guys, there's a very, very slim shot at almost none that it hits the southeastern United States, but I included it as an option because almost none is something. So we're including every single option. I hope you guys can appreciate that. I think most people that have subscribed to my channel uh, are subscribed for that reason, because that's the biggest thing that makes this channel different than pretty much any other source. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on again, and we're going to take a look at the timing. We're going to also take a look at some sea surface temperatures, and then also some spaghetti model guidance and intensity guidance at the very tail end. All right, now here we are taking a look at that most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds, and as you can see, pretty much it's only going to be nearly approaching Bermuda by time we're taking a look at, I mean, Monday, it's going to be still a couple of days away, and that's the furthest we get out on this. Mon Monday morning, it should be north of uh, kind of the very, very Eastern Caribbean. And it's probably, if it was going to hit Bermuda directly, which we don't know if that's going to happen or not, I would say that would be probably early on Wednesday time frame, but that could definitely change with any sort of shift in the speed. So you're going to want to really keep up to date with this one there in Bermuda because this one does pose a major threat. And out of anywhere that could get hit as far as land is concerned, you guys are pretty much the highest probability, obviously, as this one is heading directly your way. Although with how far it is, it could go well north or south of you at this point still. So confidence is very, very low at this point. Sea surface temperatures, we're just taking a look at the entire world just real quick. La Nina is developing nicely. We have our PDO up to the north developing a negative PDO, which encourages colder air uh, into the western United States. Not every time because we're moving into a warmer pattern for you guys. Uh, but it's just going to be, if you look at a three-month period, uh, you should see mostly colder air heading into your regions. Now, for the Atlantic, you can tell the Atlantic is mostly warmer for the most part. And as we zoom in here, we can see especially where this one is headed to the north of where it is, uh, it's heading towards warmer waters. And especially after it heads north of Bermuda, look at all those dark reds. Obviously, the average temperature is a lot lower in those regions. So it is still going to be a little bit of colder water once it's offshore or onshore of the northeastern United States. It's hard to tell for sure, like I said before. But it is going to be above normal uh, temperatures in general, which is going to give it above normal chance of continuing to develop in those regions than what it would typically have. So that is kind of a, uh, definitely a factor at this point. The seven day change, a lot of these regions have warmed as well. So they, they could continue, uh, with that kind of, uh, momentum. Now here's the probability of tropical depression. And obviously we have a 90 to 100% chance there with Larry, but there is another wave that's going to be moving offshore of Africa. And there's our wave in the Southern Caribbean. Uh, that have about a 50-50 shot for both of those. Very interesting. Spaghetti model guidance. The GEFS model seems to be the least uh, on board with a North America threat. As you can see, uh, there isn't any models that go out far enough to show this, but I would say a lot of those very far Western ones with the trajectory they're on uh, would impact the uh, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland potentially there or, or come very close and bring some impacts on shore. The European model has many of these members. It has more members, by the way, but a lot of these members definitely are heading towards even the northeastern United States, as you can see, the very far western ones. But we have a lot hitting Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And look, these red ones, none of these are weakening. These are staying at Category 3 plus storms on all of these red ones well once they hit Canada, which I don't even know if that's ever happened before. So that's going to be something to watch. I think that's mostly due to these above normal waters I showed a moment ago uh, that really, really, really 
up the chances of a stronger storm hitting you guys, maybe even a historic storm if that was to occur. But again, the probability is not the highest right now, and we need to really, really watch this. Now, the Canadian model is the most open-minded, I would say, as far as all the models are concerned. We can see this one has a lot of these hitting the mid-Atlantic states and some of the southeast states, North Carolina and Virginia being impacted on two of those members. Uh, but many of these have it heading... Uh, Again, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and then again, most of them out to sea. That is the trend at this point. Then here's the individual models, which don't go out far enough, but a lot of these keep it to the east and north of Bermuda, so that's interesting as well. This is just going to be one we need to track uh, moving forward. Intensity guidance, as you can see, uh, have this one. It's at a weaker Category 1 right now. It will move towards Category 2, according to every single one of these models. Uh, and then I would say 70% of these models have it going Category 3, Four or even five. We only have one out of five. There is one that's taking it towards a five at the tail end though, the EGRI, the darkest blue one uh, as well. So this one is likely to be a very strong storm. And the most concerning thing here is you might notice none of these show any weakening. They mostly just level off at wherever they get to. So that's mostly due to these warm waters where this one is headed. It's not expected to really weaken uh, I only see one, that green one, that really takes it on a big downtrend. But outside of that, all of these through hours 168 or hours 120, respectively, depending on how far out these models go, none of these really have it heading lower in intensity. So this one's just going to continue to strengthen or level off with where it's at, no matter where it goes, which is very, very concerning at this point. We're going to continue to keep you guys up to date with this storm. Our confidence tab is at a 2 out of 6, understandably, obviously. I'm sure you guys understand that. There is many options on the table, and our confidence is very low at this point, and that's going to continue to increase over the coming week or so. Uh, so stick with us. We're going to be tracking this storm uh, pretty religiously. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday in our September forecast, uh, how what what things you enjoy about fall it was a very broad question i asked kind of like do you guys enjoy fall what do you enjoy about fall james barr said in my opinion fall is the best season i love the leaves changing all of the halloween decorations cooler temperatures and rainy nights and i love all of those things that is just getting me so excited for the coming months of uh, late september october november as we get more and more towards uh, the fall and winter months Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lily LePan, and Donna Carnez, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Dinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J. Luke Fligo, Gary, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Crenenthal. If you'd like to be a part of this exciting patron end screen today, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms 1 and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.